Yo, 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 what it do, what it be, yo, it's your boy, Agent A-N-T, coming to you with another Apex Legendary commentary, yeah, and today we gonna be talking about Hattie McDaniel, she an underground queen, <laughs> nah, but for real, uh, Hattie McDaniel, we gonna be talking about her today, and she was the first black actress to win an Oscar for her role as Mammy in Gone with the Wind. Which, of course, was monumental, but even though she was an award-winning actress in Hollywood in the 40s and 50s, she still faced hardships uh, in the forms of being typecast, not being fully credited for all her roles, and she was even criticized by some in the black community for continuing to perpetuate the mammy stereotype and hindering the progress of black roles in Hollywood. But I'll get to that in a minute. Hattie McDaniel played in over 300 films in her lifetime, yet she's only credited for like 85, give or take, including her most famous role as Mammy in Gone with the Wind. Now, 300 films may seem like a lot, but Hattie was practically, practically born into showbiz as her mother was an actress and her father yearned for a better life for his kids as Hattie's parents were both freed slaves. So... They definitely wanted, you know, their their kids to have a better life than they did. So, her early years were spent performing in her family's traveling vaudeville show. Eventually, though, her family's show wasn't pulling in enough money thanks to, you know, the stock market crashing and, uh, and the Great Depression and all that. So, money was tight, and her family was forced to cancel the show and go back to work in regular jobs that were available to black people at the time and this was you know 1929 so not a lot of opportunities you know in in 1931 Hattie followed her siblings Sam and Etta to Hollywood and at age 37 she was booked in her first role for MGM Studios and you know in 1935 not long after you know not even five years after she landed an on-screen role with Clark Gable called China Seas, in which she impressed Gable so much that they, when they were casting for the role of Mammy in Gone with the Wind, Gable personally recommended her. And after she auditioned, she showed up and, you know, you know, straight up made Gar. She was there to play the character. And right after her audition, they canceled all further auditions. They, they found their, their Mammy. And so, Gone with the Wind was arguably America's first blockbuster film. And it stood the test of time thanks to Clark Gable's portrayal of Rhett Butler, Vivian Leigh's performance as Scarlett O'Hara, but Hattie McDaniel by far absolutely stole the show as Mammy. N like, no doubt about it. And, uh... It's crazy because, you know, it was a big deal at the time. It was a blockbuster film. Uh, and during the premiere, Hattie and the black cast couldn't go to the premiere because the premiere was in Atlanta. And, you know, some of Hattie's, uh, some of her scenes were even cut out of the film just because... Atlanta, you know, the Deep South at the time really wasn't too fond of black people having too much screen time taken away from the white folks' screen time. Uh, so there's that. So uh, it, she definitely had to face racism and, and stuff like that during her time. It's not like her being the Hollywood actress, an award-winning Hollywood actress meant that she was, you know, uh, uh, shielded from, or I, I can't really think of the word right now, she was excluded from the, the racism that was happening all, around the country at the time, pretty much. So, uh, un like I said, un unfortunately, as famous and as decorated as she was to Hollywood, she was only seen as decor. Like she was the first black, uh, the first African American woman, or woman or man to win an Oscar. She was the first black woman to sing on the radio, and was also the first black woman to star in a TV sitcom with The Beulah Show, which she joined in 1947. 
you know, but unfortunately, instead of capitalizing on her natural talents as an actress, MGM and David Selznick in particular would make sure Hattie was stuck in her role as a maid. Like, you know, she would be pretty much Mammy in most of her roles post Gone with the Wind. And she was a big, you know, marketing tool for MGM in in that role. You know, so this this was early to mid nineteen forties and she was she was pretty much stuck being a maid. It's not like she it's not like today where, you know, if you're a big time actor, the actresses, you can kind of be like, ah, oh, I want this role, you know, or this role was made for me, or, you know, the director has you in mind. No, like, still kind of like today where they're, you're pretty much going to get the roles that are given to you. Like, you don't see Jonah Hill, you're never going to see Jonah Hill in a, a Marvel series playing a superhero. And if he does, hey, more power to you. But I just don't see that for him, you know. Terrific actor. You know, I just feel like the he's a more comedic and also a more serious actor now than, you know, let's say a Marvel film. So, you know, I don't even think he would ever be offered a role in one of those. Like, just, you know, as, a, as an example. But it's much different when, you know, you coming out of slavery and black people are only being casted as savages um extremely uneducated or or maids and with with the mammy role it was kind of looked at as if you know slavery was being uh played downplayed like oh like you know look look we're letting the slaves in the house and you know they're their family and this is auntie and uncle and no 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 no. that's not really how it was at all so it was kind of like trying to change history and kind of you know paint a different role than what it you know than what was historically accurate you know even for the time period like you had you know black could need to even eat at the same restaurant and here you are saying like oh these people are willingly serving us i don't know why they would ever you know want to be you know anything other than you know servants to you know our fan you know just weird it was re- really weird but you know she she those were the roles that were available you know that those were the times is is, does it make it right absolutely not but that's did she had a famous quote she said she would rather be paid 1750 for for playing a maid in a movie than being paid 750 for just being a a regular maid or a laundress or you working in a laundromat something like that which is a, a fair point even if the roles you know are terrible if they're demeaning you know but if you're making bread, you know, not a lot of maids lived in, in, uh, where did she live in, uh, not Beverly Hills, but it was Sugar Hill, Sugar Hill, California. Not a lot of maids lived in Sugar Hill, California. Hattie McDaniel did. She was a, f- you know, she, which, again, her and another woman purchased a house in, you know, the same, you know, the Sugar Hill area, which was a white only neighborhood. And they were sued by their neighbors. They were sued by their neighbors because they claimed that they couldn't own property as black women. Or at least not own property over there. So it was just, and of course the Supreme, and the Supreme Court ended up throwing it out. But even still... That's the things that she had to face. It's not like she was exempt. That's the word I was looking for earlier. But it's not like she was exempt from racism because she was, you know, um, a, a Hollywood, an award-winning Hollywood actress. The first of, you know, uh, African-American. You know, she still had to deal with the hardships. And even in even towards, like, the end, you know, uh, during the 1940s, like I said... She was stuck being a maid, and she was stuck between uh, a rock and a hard place because the leader of the NAACP, Walter White, began a campaign against the Mammy role and began a, a smear campaign against Hattie McDaniel specifically, which I personally don't understand because, yes, eventually the NAACP got uh, better roles for uh, black people going forward. Or, you know, throughout history, they had to fight. 
but Walter White was personally targeting Hattie McDaniel when it wasn't any of her it wasn't any of her fault or her control of what roles she got or what they casted her as. That was purely David Selznick and MGM, you know, higher ups pushing her to do that. And you know, was it you know, she made a living doing what she needed to do. You know, um and she was paid very well for it. You know, like I said, not a lot of maids lived in, in Sugar Hill. Not saying that they should be, you know, that she should be, like, thankful or whatever for the roles she got. But those were the roles that were available and she decided to take them. She's a grown-ass woman, you know? And so if she even made a comment. Her and Walter White had a feud uh, for years uh, in the public eye, and they actually shook hands at an NAACP meeting in 1942, but, uh, she made it, he was running a smear campaign, and she made a comment that, uh, how is Walter White gonna tell me what's best for the black community, he's only an eighth white, something to that effect, I don't, that, that's not ver verbatim, but pretty much that's what she said, and she kind of, uh, she got a point there, kind of, uh, but again, uh, she was trying to provide for her family and she couldn't really understand why because, you know, is like, bro, if, if they're not pushing me in this role, they're going to find somebody else, you know, we, it, whether it be black. So you got someone new to be mad at or whether it be a white woman. And now you're saying, oh, the white people are taking the black roles. And now like it's really like a lose lose all the way around for Hattie. And I just don't understand why why Walter White, you know, you're trying to, like, I could understand going after the studios and Selznick and after all that, but I don't understand the beef with Hattie at all. That's just me, though. Um, and, and like I said, those were, he kind of pointed her out to be like this Uncle Tom figure, which, you know, worst thing you could be called that, you know, well, you know, by another black person, I guess, but. He pretty much equated Mammy, the Mammy role, to the Uncle Tom. But, like, when you look at a lot of films from that era, not just Gone with the Wind. When you look at, you know, even after that, you got 12 Years a Slave, Birth of a Nation, Roots. A lot of them aren't politically correct. Because political correctness over that time didn't exist. Like, some of the music during the 18 and even early 1900s was even overtly racist. And Hattie McDaniel just wanted to work in showbiz and provide for her family because she didn't want to go back to working as a, a real maid or another menial job like a laundress because, sure, the like I said, the roles back then were bad, but the pay wasn't. Plus, the jobs available, especially for black women at the time, were extremely limited. Nothing would even compare to what she was making. You know, as an actress, you know, as a nothing else at the time, I, I'd be shocked if there was, you know, so uh, I'm going to go out and say there wasn't because if there was, then she would have been like, oh, I could do, do this. And, no, no, no. And she was a natural born entertainer. Like I said, they didn't capitalize on her talent. She was funny. She could sing, yet she was always relegated to this maid role. And even in one of her later roles where she, paid, where she played a mother, they were like, oh my gosh. Even now, they're like, oh, it was a different role for her. Yeah. That's what talented people do. They could play different roles. That's what happens when they're not held down. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. But, uh, And so despite her being grossly underappreciated for, you know, pretty much the latter half of her career... Uh, when she died in 1959, her last wish was to be buried at, for at the Forever Hollywood Cemetery. And they, they not only could they couldn't, they wouldn't do it because she, they, the owners of the cemetery wouldn't allow black people to be buried there. So they made up for it by building a monument in her honor at the cemetery years later. And Hollywood would honor her with two stars on the Walk of Fame for her roles in radio and film. And she was inducted into the Black Filmmakers Hall of Fame in 75. Plus, in 2010, she was inducted into the Colorado Women's Hall of Fame. 
So, I mean, she definitely got, you know, her roses after she died. But, I mean, she's definitely, like I said, underrated while uh, she was still active and, and alive. And even though she was typecast and criticized for the latter half of her career for things that, like I said, weren't necessarily in her control, her performance as Mammy in Gone with the Wind is a shining reminder and a beacon that it, that people going to hate regardless but they gonna hate you the most when you're in your glow, cause let's face it, Walter White wouldn't have beefed with some regular maid making 750. He beefed with Hattie McDaniel, cause he, whatever he thought, you know, she was an Uncle Tom or whatever. But again, I feel like he was definitely in the wrong on that one. Just my personal opinion. But again, uh, they gonna hate you the most when you get in money, man. <laughs> and if you're an underground king or an underground queen like Hattie McDaniel. Your name is going to outlive the hate if you keep it true because everybody know who Hattie McDaniel is. And let's face it, I didn't know who Walter White was before I started doing research for this video. But um, that's just me, though. I was it's me being uneducated, but uh, shouldn't be proud of that. But <laughs> uh, the just just I knew who Hattie McDaniel was because my mom's favorite movie is Gone with the Wind. So, again, don't know too much about like NAACP like history and leaders like that sorry but i'm learning it's what it's all about gaining knowledge knowledge is power and all that but <laughs> hope y'all enjoyed the video uh r.i.p hattie mcdaniel and all that and uh hope y'all stay safe out there y'all be safe don't get smoked and uh yeah i've got about to take this dub here in the last this was last season but I really like the new Apex Legends going crazy for, you know, we've, I've been playing for 10 seasons. Crazy. But, you know, I'm on my 10th season. I haven't even started playing that or the COD 5th season, but probably start that today. Actually, I'm probably going to live stream uh, some Star Wars first part of the Let's Play today. That's what I'm going to do. But... Anyway, stay tuned for that, y'all. It's been your boy, Agent A-N-T. I'm out. Peace.